All right, so my friend Edward Webb, who messed up the audio on my student film, back to you. I think you're excited. Yeah, so he challenged me to a game of NBA 2K19. Deal was, if I lost, I'd have to do a video on the Nickelodeon animated series as told by Ginger. All right, so let's see how I did. Tell everybody who you are. I'm Edward Webb, fourth, and I'm being in Hey, now. Get <laughs> <laughs> that shit out of here. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. You fuck in here. I tried. Hey now. Fuck out of here. It was cold as ice. <laughs> look, look, he's cooking. Fuck out of here. Dust your shoulders off, young bull. Fucking you up right now. It was supposed to go down like this. <sighs> so. Ginger, huh? This is gonna be one of my uh, more controversial videos. Someone once told me the grass is much greener. Admittedly, my memory of As Told by Ginger is pretty faint, but I remember it having a strong presence on Nickelodeon when I was a kid. It was created and produced in the studio Klasky Supo, which is known as that studio that has that logo that make non-animation fans go, I remember that! I can hear you niggas now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Premiering in 2000, As Told by Ginger is about Ginger Fowley, a middle schooler that's really heavy into writing. With her friends, Dodie and Macy, she goes through everyday life as a preteen in the exciting state of... Connecticut? Ugh. Even before rewatching a single episode of the show, I knew it was going to be one of those ones that thrived more on character than in story. The way they went about this shit is actually pretty dope. Not only do characters switch their swag up every episode, but they actually grow, not even like in a character development sense. The show starts with Ginger in like 7th grade and ends with her in high school. The characters grow and change appearance and shit. I don't, I don't think there's ever been anything like this before. I remember when I first noticed Ginger's mom was losing weight, that shit blew my mind. I thought they just fucked up the scaling on the animation, but then I had to remind myself I wasn't watching fucking Steven Universe. All love though, here we are in the future, not me. Okay, let's start putting together the set list. I'm thinking we start with hip hop. I bet. <laughs> so I struggled for a while to figure out how I was going to bring up Ginger's character, but I feel like it might be because of her consistent growth. She starts off kind of whiny and anxious, but slowly becomes more and more open about her feelings in art. Like, not only does she write, but she sings too. Hey, Shug. Shug Knight. Yeah, it's your cousin. Yeah, you know that new retro sound you were looking for? Well, listen to this. There were copper colored ponies. There was air that smelled like rain. <coughs> I don't even know why you're doing this joke. You haven't even seen Back to the Future. Woo! <laughs> Wrong number, huh? All right, I'll go watch it. Ginger's motivations can be kind of off sometimes. Like, okay, in one episode, she invites her father over for Thanksgiving, but her mother's fiance and his mother are gonna be there too. And it's like, it's like, why, why would you, why would you, you, you invited what? Who? I mean, besides moments like this, Ginger's definitely a good character that you enjoy watching. That's how most of them are. I remember like going into this for some reason, I thought Dodie was gonna be like this shitty friend that's just fucking awful, but she's cool. Mildly annoying, but... You know, cool. They were copper colored ponies. The one I really like is Macy, the really quiet, sort of dorky one. She doesn't get as much focus as everyone else, but I definitely feel like she's the most interesting of the main three. Look at her, she's adorable. She looks like a little rat, a rug rat, if you will. Okay, I'll stretch for that one. Who produced this shit, Pharrell? Courtney, the rich popular girl in school, is actually really great. These kind of archetypes are normally as unbearable as they come, but the way they chose to write her here is surprisingly enduring. She isn't a bitch to Ginger, nor does she try to walk all over her. She's just kind of... stupid. Uh, why do they make children's aspirin so very difficult for the small children to open? Actually, Courtney, they do that so kids won't. My point is this. It's kind of refreshing to see a rich character not be a complete piece of shit. She's actually, like, fascinated 
by Ginger with her simple life and relationship with her mom and friends and often reflects that the reason that she doesn't have any of that is because she's so used to being pampered and having so much money. This was definitely a pleasant surprise when we watching this show. They could have easily written herself into a corner with her character. Completing Ginger's friend circle, there's Darren Patterson, her guy best friend, who might just have one of my favorite growth arcs in animation history. Starting off young and goofy with a fucking car bumper on his face. Uh. He's the one we watch grow up physically the most. Suddenly getting the brace face off as the second season starts. You see him start to come into his own and become more confident. He grows taller, starts playing football, grows his hair out, and develops more like of a build. This isn't just like something that's like switched over in one episode either, it's a gradual thing and I can't express how real that makes his character feel by the end. He definitely does a lot of goofy shit to Ginger later down the line, and I'll get there eventually, but I understand him still. And you know, that's just because- uh, black, <laughs> No it's not. A common theme of the show, especially in the last bit of its run, is that people change when they go through certain parts of their life, they grow apart. And when you look at this show through those kind of lenses, it really makes the way all of the characters treat each other make a lot more sense. Even when they treat each other badly, it's more understood than justified. That goes for all of them, really. All of them except Miranda. Fam, what the fuck is wrong with this bitch? Miranda spends the entire run of the series trying to take Ginger down a peg because Courtney likes her? I guess? At first, they kind of like had this thing going on with her where she was just like delightfully nasty. But then the bitch was just doing the same shit in every episode. So it's like they realized that. So they gave her like a little sidekick named Mipsy, who's literally just Miranda in Whiteface with a name that's one letter away from a Crip legend. Then by the third season, the both of them are like barely around. And you think it's because Ginger just started to ignore them and her life just kind of moves on. But no, I, I just think it's because they're just fucking awful characters. It's wild though, because Kree Summer bodies her performance as Miranda. The dry delivery is spot on, really helps sell the character. You know, shit characters with like great vocal performance isn't exactly a rarity. Speaking of Kree Summer, she actually recorded the original theme song for the show. On the other side. As far as I can tell, there's three versions. This one, one sung by Ginger's voice actress. Someone once told me the grass is much greener. Ugh. And the one used for the rest of the show that everyone knows, sung by Macy Gray? Nigga, is that Macy Gray? Oh my god, the vibes. Oh man, y'all wasn't outside. <laughs> but neither was I, fuck. Every episode of As Told by Ginger has a B story that centers around Ginger's little brother Carl and Dodie's little brother Hoodsy. I'll tell you right now, these two are literally the fucking best. They complete the show for me. They're really into like weird shit, collecting and examining body parts, doing just the strangest get rich quick schemes, all of that. They really help separate this show from any other mundane animated series. Their friendship and bond is just great. You really believe it, even more than Ginger and her friends sometimes. Fam. I love this nigga Carl, he's hilarious. He's like Jadakiss, you ever see a picture of Jadakiss? Nigga don't even gotta be doing nothing, he's hilarious. Why this bush knocks down the towers? <laughs> <laughs> look at this little nigga, take that fucking dashiki off. Nigga look like he just saw Black Panther. And Ginger and Carl might just have one of the top 10 animated moms in history to me. Lois is great in literally every scene that she's in and she gives the best advice. Animated shows with single moms always seem to nail it, just like The Weekenders. Both the moms do just enough to take care of the kids where they never really feel like they're missing anything. You know, kids do grow up without dads and moms have to hold the fort down for both roles. It's hard, but they make it work. I love how Ginger and Carl handle this differently. Ginger misses her dad and wants to spend time with him despite him consistently disappointing her. Carl, on the other hand, wants nothing to do with him and that's really interesting. This has to be one of the most realistic conversations I've ever heard. Carl! Dad? I... get in. <laughs> I would, but see, my mom always warned me about getting in the car with a total stranger. Ouch. I guess I deserve that. There's a ton of other characters too. Courtney's brother Blake, Carl's girlfriend Noelle, Lois's soon fiance Dr. Dave. The world just feels so massive and it's dope. Noelle's introduction is pretty weird though, since she does like telekinesis and moves shit around with her mind. She like throws the whole tone of the show off. Nothing else happens like this unless you count that fucking ghost that talks to Lois. She's like 
11 but her nose doesn't bleed because nobody's nose bleeds on nickelodeon in 2000 i mean like she's weird and all but i've seen stranger things <laughs> <laughs> Bam, I forgot how fucking morbid this show gets. The first episode is like a standard sitcom scenario until Ginger gets fucking bagged by 12. <laughs> and she's eating, she's eating like a salad in the second episode and an old lady fucking dies. Carl brought her here to the house for dinner because they do pranks together and she just fucking dies. Look at this nigga's fit, he's adorable. It makes me want to cry how cute this little ugly boy is. <sighs> Yo, me too, man. Fam. Three and a half niggas die throughout the three seasons of this cartoon. And somehow they all have to do with Carl. It's like this little nigga's cursed. First, Maude dies in the second episode. Then his role model dies in front of him on stage at his school, but then it turns out like he's faking to scare the other kid. Then his teacher dies, his fucking teacher. And what just might happen to be my second favorite episode in the series because of the final shot. I think she would have wanted you all to know that she loved her job and she loved her students each and every one of you like what the fuck imagine seeing this while waiting for angry beavers to come on or something where the fuck was i oh yeah his friend's grandmother dies too that's number three honestly like i don't even have any malice against ginger except for the fact that like the characters look ugly here you know what's ugly? The, the scores was ugly. Okay. Everyone in this show looks like shit. This is a problem people had with majority of the Klasky Supo shows, which I admittedly never fully understood. I never really thought Rugrats was ugly after the first season. And Rocket Power actually doesn't look half bad. But, oh man, these designs at first glance are bananas. They keep drawing the mouth on the chin. Stop doing that shit. It looks nasty. I remember on one of these episodes, Lois's mouth actually moves to the normal spot for one second and the animation autocorrected itself like it's an iPhone or something. Hey, mommy, just texting you to let you know that I love you. Send. I now have 48 hours to live. Were the designs always like this or did a new artist come in or something? Now, hold on, let's take a look at the pilot. Ah! Pause. What the fuck? I'll be honest, the more the show went on, the less the designs bothered me, unless they introduced a new character that looks really off or something like that. The animation is nice, they all move pretty well, but it really thrives in the storyboarding. Look at some of these compositions, they do a lot of really dope shit with the camera. The second and third season have this really nice consistent shading on the characters too, that's really rare. Love that detail. The backgrounds are kind of weird though. Look at these shits. These are like real bricks. You don't notice it at first, but once you do, you never not see it. And I just ruined it for all of you, you're welcome. I think As Told by Ginger might have the most peculiar episode structure issue that I've ever seen. Alright, so let's look at an episode like Family Therapy, right? A normal show would have had Macy and Mipsy having their birthday parties on the same day, and that's it. Instead, this one has that. Then Macy's parents forget her birthday. Then Ginger convinces her to confront them. Then she does it. Then they start to shower her with attention and I move my fucking computer mouse and there's still nine minutes of the episode left. Then Ginger tells Macy to stand up for herself because her parents are treating her like she's five because they weren't around for her childhood or whatever the fuck. And it's like, they beefing now, I guess. Then they actually throw her a birthday party and I'll shake my fucking mouse again and there's three minutes left. And that's not even counting the B story where Carl's scared of fucking naked mole rats. Like half of these plot points could have been the end of the episode, but nah, there's just like so much story. Episodes of As Told by Ginger are just so dense that they feel like they're going on longer than they actually are. There's so much, it's like you just watch two episodes in a row. See, but like where the weirdness and shit comes in is that nothing feels rushed. If anything, it just feels dragged. Some episodes are cool, but a grand majority, especially in the middle of the run, just feel like they just keep going on and on and on. Like, we get it. The grass is green. Just like, let's talk about something else. Like, how was your day? Hello? Earth to 
it, Ginger? I mean, it's like this county fair episode that I admittedly didn't enjoy too much, but I feel like it's the best example of how to pace an episode the right way. The story is simplified. It doesn't take any wild twist and turns every five seconds. It doesn't feel like nothing happens in the episode. It feels like enough happens. All right, so welcome back to Toon Riffic Tariq's As Told by Ginger Review. With me, I have the entire Dallas Mavericks team, the team that I lost with on my legacy game of 2K, the one that got us here. What do you have to say for yourselves? I fucking hate basketball. I'm thinking we start with hip hop. Move to contemporary pop. Oh, say no more. It's not that I don't want you here. As Told by Ginger is one of the few animated shows of this era that really pushed the whole heavy continuity ongoing storyline thing, and it does it in its own unique way. The first two seasons don't really flow as a singular narrative, but more like a sequence of events that connect. Ginger gets arrested, and in the next episode, she has to do community service. The third season feels like a full ongoing narrative with a beginning, middle, and end. Ginger and Darren date, break up, Ginger develops trust issues, and questions commitment as she has to prepare her mother to get married. Honestly, the show is relatively decent at both of these. After some thought, I definitely feel like the second season is more fun, but I think I prefer the structure of the third season and the storytelling. Probably because it's so rare for the medium, especially for this time period. Alright, so I was trying to find a place in the script that was good enough for me to put this, but shout out to the channel Old School Lane, who's really been holding the fort down in terms of As Told by Ginger content. They ran a podcast on there a while ago that went over every episode of this show called We're In Between. It's pretty dope, they got the cast on there and shit. And I'm about to talk about a heavy amount of episodes in this portion of the video, so if I don't bring up any of the ones that you wanna hear about, give them a look, tell them Tariq sent you. But no, finish this video first. You're subscribed to me, not them. Right? In the third season, Ginger finally realizes that black men don't cheat. She ditched all them racially ambiguous zeros and got with a negro. I've been giving it a lot of thought and I I just think we have to work a little harder at it. Ginger, it's over. Oh shit! You <clears throat> it look hot in here. We could have been and we try to pretend and I remember when I first told y'all that I lost that game in 2K. Fucking this nigga up right now! <laughs> One of the comments sort of implied that Darren cheated on Ginger. And I don't know why, but that's actually kind of how I remember it happening. I guess I might have made it up. What really happens is Darren and Ginger grow apart as they enter high school. Darren plays football like his older brother did and enjoys it. While Ginger has all of the hard classes and kind of just like buries herself in her schoolwork. They fight often, Ginger doesn't show up to his games like a Nubian white queen should, and them being together just kind of puts this like weird patch on the dynamic between them, Macy, and Dodie. Darren grows closer with a cheerleader, whose job is literally to cheer for this nigga while he's on the field, and you can tell that something's there. And he doesn't really realize it until Dodie points it out to him and was like, You should probably talk to my friend before you fall in love with the Negro! That's how Dodie sounds to me. <laughs> So like, I mean like, it's fucked up, but like, the nigga ain't cheap. He just kind of danced around the idea. So, the my statement still stands, black men don't cheat. I dare you to show me a single black man who cheated. Write all that shit you want to, nigga, I can't read. The Ginger and Darren stuff is definitely really interesting through the third season is great. The episode where Darren breaks up with her is definitely a low point for me because it might just be the most melodramatic thing ever animated. Darren breaks up with Ginger while telling her that there's someone else in the picture. Us, we're over. There's someone else. Simone. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that, my nigga. Then she like cries in a room for hours until her mother comes to check on her and she's like found lifeless. Apparently her fucking appendix exploded and she has to get rushed into surgery and we get another fucking trash ass pop song sung by her that's supposed to be emotional, but it's like nobody told this little white girl she can't sing. There were copper colored ponies. Face ass. There's like some stuff with Daring battling wanting to see her and make sure that she's okay, but feeling like she doesn't want to see him, that's really interesting. But by then I'm already fucking exhausted. Ginger, you good sis? The grass still green on the other side. <laughs> Wait. All right, man. So I know like it seems like I keep grabbing individual episodes at a time to complain about them, but Wicked Game 
might just be the worst episode in this show's entire run. So like, Dodi and Macy, mostly Dodi, are really upset because Ginger's spending all her time with Darren now, and Miranda and Mipsy are upset because Ginger ignores them? I guess? So then they stage this weird ass plan to have Ginger's ex-boyfriend call and make it sound like she was talking to him while she was with Darren, so that they break up and Macy and Dodie can have their friend back. Which is fucked up, because literally an episode ago, Darren was their friend too. Courtney finds out, rightfully snitches, connects them on a six-way phone call in like 2002, where Ginger can hear Dodie give them the rundown of the sickest plan in animation history. Then, Ginger speaks. Thanks, Courtney. I've heard enough. That was Ginger. It was an ambush. Macy, that was Ginger. What have we done? Man, what the fuck? I'm already pissed because this whole shit is like just filthy. I don't know why Ginger's friends would even consider doing something like this, especially Macy. This whole shit is just disgustingly out of character in all regards. I mean, granted, she doesn't say much, but she's still there. Like, why is she there? Then you got Dodie goofy ass leaving a voicemail at the end apologizing and shit. Oh my gosh, Ginger, I'm so sorry. Shut up, bitch. Next time, motherfucker, call and tell him I said suck my dick. But you know what really makes this the worst episode? It doesn't fucking mean anything. But I have so many things that I want to say. Starting with, I am so sorry. It's fine, it's fine, it's just a, well, today's the day Lucinda finds out if Dirk is really Clarice's father. <laughs> oh my god, I hate this shit. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Yeah, you heard me. You can't do that. Hey, don't do that. You can't tell a story this way. I feel like I'm on fucking Mars. This is big. This is like a major plot point. We're going to act like nothing happened next week. Bitch, does this look like rocket power? Don't answer that. Because... And that's the thing. That's the main problem with this episode. They set this world up to let you know that these characters are literally designed to change. So it's really frustrating when they don't. This isn't a constant and definitely isn't representative of how the show is ran, but I think that's what makes instances like this stick out like sore thumbs. I know I mentioned it before kind of jokingly, but No Hope for Courtney, the one where Carl's teacher dies, is honestly a phenomenal episode. Pretty much Mrs. Gordon gets tired of Carl's pranks and retires. Carl feels awful and misses her and begs her to come back, which she refuses. He does everything he can, even offers to change, but she won't budge. Ultimately, he throws her a retirement party and asks her one last time to come back, and she finally agrees. The next day, the principal comes in and says that she passed away. This shit broke me, my nigga. It pissed me off a little bit that it never got followed up upon, but the emotion in this joint is unmatched. And it adds a little extra layer that is dedicated to the voice actress who passed away. Oh, and like, I guess Nickelodeon fucked up the airing, so she appears after this too? You niggas is nasty. <laughs> now that we're on it, I was doing a little research and Nickelodeon treated the show like shit after the second run. I mean, there's some consistency in air dates, but then some episodes aired on Nicktoons or on the fucking splat 10 years later or not even at all. The fucking finale was just treated as like a straight to DVD movie and it still hasn't aired on TV. Nicole Simpson can't rap. I will jump. Just briefly, the finale of this show is top tier. It's a crime that it never got to air. And Ginger's trust issues are tested as she has to prepare her mom to get married to Dr. Dave. She's still trying to get over Darren and can't really grasp the concept of love anymore. There's a lot, and I mean a lot more going on in this special that makes it a really fun watch. But what really did it for me was the way that it ended. Majority of the episodes of the show end with Ginger writing in her journal, and we hear her voiceover. Well, this time, we hear her, but like, it's a deeper voice. We see Ginger at a book signing, reading the final words of her book, and we see all of the characters aged up, listening along proudly. She says thank you, closes the book, and the title says, as told by Ginger. My nigga, this shit is cold. It was here when I realized how attached to these characters I had become because I dead almost cried when I saw the older version of Carl. I mean, the nigga's still ugly, but he got swag now, like me. The fan service stuff like Ginger and Darren having the kids together is great, but man, is this satisfying. 
It's impossible to tell stories with the kind of truth we did on Ginger today. Everyone's yeah. much more afraid of those kind of stories. In, at my vintage, I've now produced more than 500 half hours of television. Wow. And, That's amazing. And, yeah. and these are still like the 65 half hours that are, I most cherish and I'm most Aww. proud of. That Because Ooh. it did something that no one else was doing and it did touch those people. Meet someone who who loved it so and it, you see it in their eyes, as you just said. It's really moving because you're like, mm. wow. Yeah. This is was something we hardly, you know, we, we we were hardly on the radar in the world, but yet mm. we, we made such an impact, which was totally great. This has been one of the hardest videos I've ever had to write, and I think it's because I was scared that I couldn't do the show justice. For what is worth, problems and all, as told by Ginger, is definitely worth every second. It's not perfect, but it's complete and I love that. Watching this show wasn't a chore, it was an experience. Even though I lost that game of 2K, I still feel like I won. No, don't show me the score, assholes. I said in the beginning of the video that I remember little to nothing about As Told By Ginger before rewatching it for this video, but now I see that Ginger, Carl, Dodie, Macy, all her friends are unforgettable, but you know, I not only remember Ginger now, but I remember every single one of her stories, just as she told us. On the other side. Okay, let's start putting together the set list. I'm thinking we start with hip hop, move to contemporary pop, and then finish with something soulful. We're not put on this earth to live perfect lives where we never get hurt and we never make mistakes. And the bruises and scrapes you get along the way, they just mean you're living life. I hope one day you can forgive me for this. But I won't, Darren. The thing is, I never will. Someone once told me the grass is much greener on the other side. And I bet a visit where well, it's possible I missed it. Some different, yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Till further notice. Till further notice. I'm in between. I'm in between. From where I'm standing. From where I'm standing. My grass is green. Thank you. Someone once told me the grass is much greener. On the other side That was beautiful, Mom. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, bro, no, nah, no, nah. shit, like, shit, I'm, I'm about to watch this shit, wait a minute, oh my god, you see that right now? <laughs>